पीजे जेम्स कॉम्रेड जेम्स ओके कॉम्रेड कैन यू हेयर मी यस यस कॉम्रेड यस यस लाउड एंड डिस्टिंक सो आवर एमिनेंट स्कॉलर्स डॉक्टर शम्सुल इस्लाम एंड डॉक्टर राम बिनियाई बोथ दे हैव एक्सप्लेन्ड इन डिटेल द पॉलिटिकल द डायमेंशंस uh uh dr shamsul islam explained the political dimensions with respect to jali and balabag struggles uh, uh dr ram biryani uh, explained in detail the uh, with specific emphasis on the uh, social on the cultural uh, aspects of this question so a a a, a, a whole i i mean that uh, uh, an almost uh, Uh, what is called a whole uh, uh, all embracing way of explanation has already been there now uh, so from the part of the i think that when we explain when we approach this question from the perspective of the kashmir nihilation movement and the revolutionary cultural forum uh, we must know that the when we examine the Uh, indian uh, if you go to the indian historiography that means the way in which history writing is done there are these traditions which uh, dr shamsul and uh, dr ramdeep priyani both said these tradition these progressive traditions are not given that much importance that we know for example if you take phule say even much before the uh, the coming of the communist movement because the communist manifesto was published in 1848 but in india jyotiba phule started his work much earlier and even in satyashodak samaj and in 1848 he when the year in which marx and engels published the communist manifesto in india that the schools uh, for the dalits the women against the patriarchy against caste and against brahmanism so this tradition the tradition uh, on the part of the oppressed highlighting the the cause of the oppressed that tradition is not that much discussed in indian historiography and it is uh, uh, to an extent it is camouflaged also and uh, my my opinion is that a major part of this uh this is mainly because of even the so called left they also failed to highlight this issue in a proper way for example the tradition of of course ambakar is a, a is a different uh, ambakar has a different history even bhagat singh also we know that the most famous freedom fighter of india bhagat singh so this this of course that is there but at the same time this stream of thought when in, in indian history if we examine the contributions the traditions the 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 views of the renaissance leaders the social who worked in the social reform front their views and their uh, contributions were to an extent neglected also the main reason i think that of course the right the the ruling classes the 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 reactionary the conservative forces have their own explanation and their own reasons logic begin that what what about the left if we examine the left i am now concentrating on that question for example we take the case of the uh, uh, indian independence struggle a, 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 a book written by history of indian independence struggle a book a 1146 page book written by uh ems the the leader of the indian communist movement the who was the general secretary of the communist the cpm so in that book there is no even except a photo of ambakar there is no mention of even ambakar so when ems discusses much about the uh, so many things about the indian uh, uh, independence struggle the what the contribution of ambakar is how ambakar fought what is the relevance of ambakar in india's freedom struggle what is the relevance of ambar ambakar in indian social trans this aspect is totally ignored or i can give you another another example 
there there is a, uh, a, a anti caste uh, leader uh, probably the biggest anti caste leader the dalit leader uh, the leader from the dalits that is ayyengali so ayyengali is the first leader in uh, in kerala probably i, I don't maybe in india who led a farm workers struggle in 1907 against the upper caste who objected the entry of dalits the entry of the lower caste in schools common schools that is why the kings allowed the dalits and the lower caste people to enter uh, to uh, school entry the upper caste the brahmins and the upper caste people objected to that they even resorted to violence though so ayyengali the leader of the dalits led by him and year long farm workers struggle took place in kerala and uh, it was successful also we must see that october revolution was in 1917 but ayyengali led a farm workers struggle a historic farm workers struggle in kerala in 1907 <laughs> unfortunately unfortunately I, i am using that uh, uh, that adjective in a book written by ems again that is the uh, kerala the land motherland of malayalis is also a book written by ems there there is no mention of ayyengali not even a mention of ayyengali is there in that book but ayyengali's role in kerala history is uh, as far as the downtrodden the oppressed the dalits are concerned it is uh, unparalleled but what is the approach so we must see that my point is that when we discuss these questions the role of phule for example phule is not merely concentrating on the indian question ab uh, gulamgiri but what comrade samsul clearly said in the book written by the uh, phule in that book he was speaking about the african american movement not only really the indian dalits phule was uh, taking the uh, the world question also the slavery question and comparing this slavery question to the indian uh, dalits and it was bhule who first used the word dalit we know it was phule so in and the role played by bhule and savitri bai in the emancipation of women so in in modern history in textbooks in classrooms these are not at all given adequate importance we know even ambakar we must know that uh, ask all co- ask uh, the uh, the uh, the scholars who already explained when the rss was formed in 1925 it was ambakar who could identify the threat which is the ideology of this rss so immediately that is why in 1927 ambakar came forward and banned it banned manusmriti now in in bengal today yesterday when the narendra modi when he was campaigning in calcutta of course comrades mentioned here about that so modi said mamata other trinamool congress has insulted the scheduled caste now their modi is using identity politics he is deconstructing the caste there in his own ways so by using identity politics modi said that the mamata government has insulted the scheduled caste they hurt the they hurt ambakar they insulted ambakar but actually who who did the greatest insult to scheduled caste it was the rss because the manusmriti we know we must i am not uh, going into those details because manusmriti treats dalits and women as subhumans so it was the rss which not only as comrade ramvinyani said about sudarshan even in 1949 and 50 rss demanded that the indian constitution should be uh, manusmriti they demanded that manusmriti should be the indian constitution so who did the greatest insult to the dalits so so now they are this is what we are seeing is a a post to truth what we called that they are all camouflaging the whole history a new history writing is now going on as the europeans now the neo fascists of europe they are sorting to a new history writing a new type of writing what they are saying this new history i am not going into those details a new history writing is there for example they say that instead of stalin instead of stalin roosevelt and churchill should have uh, joined with hitler so this type of a new history writing thing is there so in the same way 
a new history writing is going on in india yeah by the rss and by the sangha leaders so what the left is what is the responsibility of the left in this regard that, that on that question i am concentrating comrades except in for example in 1930 3031 it was only in that draft platform of action a document prepared by the then communist party communist movement it was only there that a clear cut approach to the caste question a clear cut approach to the abolition of caste was taken and it was in continuation of this approach that uh, an alliance a unity between the uh, between the uh, ambakar who published this famous work in uh, caste integration in this uh, unpublished uh, uh, undelivered speech that he published in 1936 we know and uh, it was during the 30s that uh, an alliance also was there with ambakar by the communist party but from the 40s onward what we see the communist party in 1943 in 1948 and uh, nowhere there we see a clear cut approach to the caste question whatever leftist scholars whatever so called leftist scholars said they said that the advancement of the march of modernity the march of modernity will lead to the withering away of caste that was a, that was the point raised by uh, upheld by them so there is no need of we struggle against the caste system and they never understood as comrade rambiyani said about the mode of production how the mode of production here is to be understood how what is the role of the caste in mode of production here what is the role of caste in the division of labor here what is the role of caste in surplus value appropriation here what is the role of caste here in wealth appropriation in ownership of the means of production so without going into the so the basic question that 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 where the left failed the so called left the mainstream left failed in india that we have to see when we examine these questions without examining without self critically examining these questions we cannot move forward what they said uh, i am not going into i am not mentioning those names of these scholars so many uh, so called marxist scholars are there they said that the enlightenment modernity what happened in europe so this will eliminate the caste here so there is, it is quite natural when uh, capitalism develops when industry develops when uh, capital penetrates into uh, into the agricultural sector into the countryside as a result of capitalist advancement caste will be there away that was understanding but what we see now caste is now safely seated on the seat of modern industry that is what we are see caste is there in the what is the problem of indian uh, the oppressed and the working class today so here we see that the unity of the oppressed the unity of the working class what is the factor so caste is the basic the the, the it is the the main factor it is the it is the factor behind Uh, that, that is behind the unity of the oppressed unity of the working class that is the point that we have to see and what the left has done so on this question a clear cut analysis is needed we need a clear cut analysis what should be our approach to what 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 was the uh, understanding of history writing what i mean what was what should be our approach to history what should be our approach to uh, periyar ambakar and pule on all these questions we need a pre thinking and analysis now coming to the present question so what happened after 47 in the neo colonial period is it today there is an interesting thing today today it is april 13th today rss has started most of you might have listened that today on april 13th rss has started a pu uh, subhoshan abhiyan many of you might have heard that yes six month abhiyan is going on enriching the land for agriculture making the land more fertile starting organic farming and what is called this yajna uh, abhiyan a land enrichment abhiyan is going on from today onward why i am saying in kerala 
ten thousand such a nyas are how started today. Ten thousand nyas led by various feeder organizations of the RSS, uh, Seva Bharati, Vishu Hindu Parishad, uh, Temple Protection Committee. So many, so many RSS, 10 leading RSS organizations, affiliated organizations in Kerala. This is the national, see, because it was Mohan Bhavad who declared this, this appear. So these 10, more than 10 RSS feeder organizations have started a, a boomy, what is called a land enrichment appear today. And it will last for six months. Thousands of Tens of thousands of uh, programs are arranged all over India. What is the situation? Land is land, agriculture, and the whole uh, uh, is being now sell, being sold out to the uh, American companies, American multinational companies, and their junior partners, Ambani's and Adani's. And even Sodeshi Jagaran Manch, that also is there in this campaign. So on this question, on this question, how, the, how what is the role of the left? How we, we have to understand? How we have to interpret all these questions? So I am coming to the point now. Coming, let us take the case of the these uh, agriculture. This comrade uh, uh, Rambiniani uh, made a, uh, an evaluation. What has happened under colonialism? And after that, uh, how this agriculture development? How uh, we know green revolution, penetration of capital into agriculture? What has happened? But what is the role of caste? Whatever development, whatever agricultural development is there, whatever capitalist development is there, caste is safe. The caste system is, uh, is adapted to, it is, it is capable of adapting to these uh, new capitalist development, the so-called new, what we, we made, uh, even the neoliberalism. So what step we have to, what step is needed on this question, I think that the calm caste annihilation movement has to uh, take up this question in a serious way. How we have to, what, what, what happened in history? What is the failure of the left in concretely evaluating Indian history, in understanding caste? For example, even Mars, even Mars himself, uh, I am not going into controversial things, even Mars himself, he had only uh, second-hand information regarding India. In spite of that, he said that there is a, the capitalist mode which I am examining here is not suited to all social formations. That is why he, he put forward a new Asiatic mode of production. You must see. So the how the in a country, how in especially when Mars spoke about Asiatic mode, he was mentioning about India. It was specifically mentioning about India. And uh, he was uh, in, in almost all his books in Capital, in critic to the uh, a contribution to the critic of political economy, and in almost all books written by Marx, and in his uh, articles to the New York Daily Tribune, articles written by Marx. In all these, there is a, an, a, a, an explanation, there is reference uh, on caste. And that is based on that Mars uh, put forward that uh, the, 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 the we have to understand the social formation in countries like India in a different perspective. And that is why he put forward the conceptualization, Asiatic mode of production. But what happened? Whether our Indian, uh, uh, the so-called Indian scholars, Indian leftists, what they did, whether they have made an evaluation. All of them followed the the what happened in 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 uh, later what happened after the Leningrad discussions in the thirties, uh, even that concept Asiatic mode of, mode of production itself uh, was be was removed from discussion altogether. And uh, uh, now other scholars, for example, uh, who wanted to explain, who tried to explain the social situation in countries like uh, Africa, India. They have to use other, they, somebody called, some, some of them used a tributary mode of production, etc., etc. So this, uh, this uh, conceptualization is no, nowhere used in India today. So we have to examine these questions. Uh, my point is that, so from a left perspective, a proper evaluation of the, uh, the caste in India, a proper evaluation of the Renaissance leaders, uh, 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 what is the uh, because uh, as Ambakar said what Ambakar said 
political tyranny is nothing compared to the tyranny. Ambakar was correct. And that is why, why, what we are Now, after uh, Ambakar's constitution came into being, as a comrade uh, Rambuniani said, Ambakar warned that unless you, uh, unless the this is implemented properly, and if uh, appropriate uh, uh, intervention there on the uh, regarding the case of religion and caste, what will happen? Everything will go back to uh, and we, we will move to a situation uh, where it will be more pitiable, more horrific, and that we are examining today. So what we need today is that uh, unless this social question and uh, and uh, so many criticisms are there even from the uh, leftist scholars many are saying that renaissance leaders social reform uh, even starting from ayangali uh, uh, periyar even ambakar there is a criticism from the left they say that they never gave importance to and even uh, uh, there is a this is a general uh, usual criticism that uh, they never gave importance to anti colonial struggle they never gave importance to anti british struggle they were orienting to the uh, caste question only etc etc so what was the uh, is it is it a, a valid criticism even ambagar himself said so raj means it is a transfer of power to the indian brahmanical classes which is the poison Brahminism is the poison. That was Ambagar's understanding, Ambagar's explanation. Caste is based on Brahminism, which is a poison of the Indian people. And therefore, so unless we resist, unless we understand, we should have a, a methodology, we should have a capability to understand the caste in the concrete Indian context. What is the role of caste? What is the role of caste in politics? What is the role of caste in social division of labor? What is the role of caste in uh, how caste is playing a role in surplus value abstraction? What is the role of caste in social formation? So unless we have a, an analysis with that perspective, uh, we will not succeed. So it is here that the RSS. It is here that the RSS and other forces are now winning. And it is here that even the identity politics, the neo, neo Ambakar, it's also who are actually denying, who are actually denying whatever positive contributions are there on the part of Ambakar. For example, Ambakar stood for, Ambakar was not an identity theorist. He stood for caste annihilation. Along with the caste annihilation, he put forward land nationalization. Whether that conceptualization is correct or not, that is another question. So Ambakar could understand the relationship between land, the, the inseparable, the, the interlink between uh, caste and land relations. But what the communists did, I am uh, I am not explaining much. Uh, let, let me give a, a small instance. In Kerala, because I am coming from Kerala, I have to explain. In Kerala, there is a land reform led by the first communist ministry. Everybody knows that it is, uh, it is uh, considered as one of the most progressive land reforms in India. But what was the content of that land reform? The, the Dalits, the, the real tillers of the soil, they were totally excluded from this land reform. Land was actually gone to a middle class, middle caste section middle, by the Syrian Christians and the middle caste. Those who were the real tillers of the soil, they were totally excluded from land and they were driven to colonies. Three cents one two cents colonies and uh, now uh, and to the peripheries of society they are not in the mainstream and uh, now kerala is having the biggest land concentration in india that is also one thing kerala is a place a a, 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 a country a state in india which is with, with just one percent of india's land area with three percent of indian population is having the biggest land concentration today. One of the pro most progressive land reforms in India. That too done by a so-called left a communist party. So what is the point? The caste question, without taking caste into consideration, you cannot approach even land relations. So if, if you are sorting your land reform, then caste is very important. 
so unless you avoid this or uh, caste is a superficial question i uh, it, it will vanish it will wither away once you advance when uh, uh, the working class advances this uh, caste will be resolved this type of a mechanical approach led to the whole question and the approach to the renaissance players up and understanding ambakar understanding bule periyar so all these questions are related to that so i am not explaining much i i in continuation of the uh, uh, dr ramani and in continuation of dr samsul islam i am saying that my point is that if we have to approach if we have to answer the rss if we have to uh, take up this question in the proper perspective then we must have a proper way of understanding evaluation a concrete evaluation of history and a concrete evaluation of present what were our mistakes and if we are prepared to have a self critical evaluation of the past and a concrete evaluation of the present from a uh, perspective uh, in which we must we must unite with all progressive forces in spite of ideological differences which is the main threat today in an anti fascist in a fascist situation we know that all those forces who are fighting against the fascism we have to unite with all those forces and uh, at the same time we should have a proper way of understanding all these questions and we should have a methodology we should be capable of analyzing these questions and only then we can move forward this is what i have to say in b- very brief i am not explaining much in this context because uh, the uh, both uh, our uh, friends uh, they have already explained much they have already explained about the political uh traditions the political heritage the cultural and the social dimensions of uh the uh, uh, the situation and uh, my point is that we have to uh, have a historiography we have a, an understanding of history we have a, an approach towards a concrete evaluation of uh, the past and the present and uh, uh, in that way we must uh, uh, understand that unless we approach the social tyranny Uh, uh now based on the caste system the most inhuman unique uh, social system that now india is having approaching that and uh, uh, taking the political cultural social uh, economic questions in that perspective we have to approach the question this is what i have to say in very brief thank you very much thank you very much comrade pj james Uh, मैं इसका संक्षिप्त में अनुवाद कर रहता हूं कॉम्रेड पीजे जेम्स ने कहा कि हमारे दोनों पूर्व विद्वान वक्ता कॉम्रेड शमशुल इस्लाम और कॉम्रेड राम पुनियानी जी ने ये जो हमारा विषय है इसको करीब करीब पूरा समेट लिया है बहुत महत्वपूर्ण जो पहलुओं को उन्होंने सामने लाया है क्रांतिकारी सांस्कृतिक मंच और जाति उन्मूलन आंदोलन के मनुवादी हिंदुत्व के खिलाफ अभियान के द्वितीय चरण के परिप्रेक्ष्य में एक बात ध्यान रखने की भारत में जो इतिहास लेखन की प्रगतिशील परंपरा की उपेक्षा हुई है कॉमेंट जेम्स का कहना है कि जैसे कि फूले के बारे में 1848 में जब मार्स और एंगेल्स कम्युनिस्ट घोषणा पत्र की रचना कर रहे थे पूरे दुनिया के मेहनत के लिए उस समय ज्योतिबा फूले और उनकी पत्नी सावित्रीबाई फूले ने मिलकर पुणे में सबसे पहले महिलाओं के लिए स्कूल स्कूल का निर्माण किया था तो ये समसामयिक जीवन में कि उसने उथल पुथल मचा दिया था और इतनी बड़ी घटना की इतने बड़े एक सामाजिक परिवर्तन की शुरुआत की तथाकथित वामपंथियों ने उपेक्षा की 